we're here to discuss the topic of the program known as Social Security, which many of us have been contributing to for a great many years. And there are people in the Republican Party and conservatives who are the impression that Social Security is not a good idea and that it should be abolished. And so I'm going to address their three primary contentions. Contention number one is that um, people live too long, and so they need to raise the age of retirement of eligibility for Social Security. I believe you can get some of it when you're 62, and the average retirement age should be 65. And some people are actually pushing it till 70. And I'm sure they would like to say, oh, you should retire when you're 70, 72, 80. There's a few drawbacks on that, is that most people um, have trouble living that long. And so then there would be not much of a benefit there. It also means employers would have to employ the elderly for a much longer time. And thus, there would not be new jobs opening for the younger people below. And as the case, and many people, as they get older, they discover that even though it's against the law, age discrimination is alive and well in America. So the company will just say, oh, you're 62? Well, you're useless to us now. How would you like to push a broom? How would you like to clean the toilet out? And well, you've been making a good salary as an analyst, as a broker or something before, and now suddenly you'll be having your last retirement years making minimum wage, and that's what the Social Security benefit is based off of your last few years of employment. So that gets to be a problem, and it's not necessary. Um, the other part is that the Social Security fund is going bankrupt, and there's a truth is, is that there's trillions of dollars in it, but it may also be gradually depleting. And part of that is due to the baby boomers. There's a lot of them, and they're retiring now. But also, baby boomers are starting to die off in greater numbers. So I think that eventually that will equalize. But in any event, there are remediations that can be done to help that situation, one of which is taking off the maximum income uh, cap on there, where you only have to pay Social Security tax until you make a certain amount of money, and if, when you make above that, you just pay the same amount and not pay the same percentage rate. So, if they took that cap off and the billionaires paid their fair share, I think it would be quite solvent indeed. Of course, the billionaires who are backing the abolition of Social Security would really not like that idea, because it would drain a little bit of their finances just a little bit. But selfishness knows no balance there. Finally, is their concept of privatization. That, well, you know, um, if we were to invest it into something like the stock market or bonds, it would pay much better dividends or generate more money than it does in a social security fund where it pays out a fixed benefit, a defined benefit, mind you. So instead of a defined contribution, it's a defined benefit. So they don't like that because what it does to the conservatives is it makes them responsible for your money. They have to be able to give back to you because you put in. And some might call it an entitlement. And I agree, it is an entitlement. If you put money in, if you pay taxes, by all means, you are entitled. That's your money. It's not their money. They don't want to be responsible for it, because if they be responsible for it, they have to take good care of it. And they don't want that on them. They want to be able to do with that money as they please. They want to play with it. They want to give it to their friends and associates for favors and for contributions for their campaigns. And that's the trouble with it. Now, my take is also, when you put money in Social Security, 
the government is then has a fiduciary responsibility to you. You are the investor, the primary investor. They are responsible to you. When you privatize it, the government is no longer responsible to you. They just threw your money over the wall and said, here's some risk, but maybe you'll make some more money. So I don't like it because they are shuffling away their responsibility to you. You paid them for it. And I consider it an investment. So I expect a return on my investment. The trouble is, they don't like that. Some person one time made a joke about socialism, saying the trouble with socialism is eventually they run out of everybody else's money. Um, and that was kind of caught the liberals off guard at the time. But the truth is, that saying still will be in effect, but now it's for capitalism. The trouble with capitalism, like when they privatize your retirement money, is that eventually they run out of your money. And then they'll claim there's some crisis, like they did in 2008, and that they need to be bailed out. With what? Oh, more of your tax money you've already paid in. So you get to pay twice. So the trouble with capitalism is that it eventually runs out of everybody else's money. And then it cannibalizes itself. So, I I know of people that are in investments, and they say, well, by all means, I could invest that money and make more on it than I could will through the Social Security system. That's because they are a licensed broker. They worked for a major firm. The firm and the broker has tools at their disposal and training and knowledge that make them skilled at that field. Most very old people who have retired have neither the mind, the inclination, or the skills to do profitable investing. They want to just retire. They want to sit back in their cottage and fish. They don't want to be seen. They're managing their investments day by day, jumping it from one Ponzi to the other Ponzi. They just want their solid check coming back. And there's another analogy that I call the gambling analogy, because I know a gambler, professional gambler, who makes lots of money by winning most of the time. But there's a trick to it. The gambler has been specially trained, and the gambler works for the house. And so the rules are in favor of the house and the gambler. So they gamble all day. And sure, some other people win occasionally. But most people lose. And they have the advantage of the house behind them. When I ask the gambler if they would ever go in as a customer and gamble from the other side, they say, of course not. They know how the system works. They've had the training. And they know that even if they are, with all that knowledge, if they are not the house, they do not have the advantage. And this is the same thing with privatizing your Social Security, is you have then given it over to like a gambling house. And while they can turn it over and make more money out of it, that is not their primary business directive. Their primary business directive is to make profits for themselves and for their main investors, which now you are not because you're just a contracted out fund from the government. So. I urge you, if you can, write to your Congress and tell them no to Social Security uh, privatization. Hold them responsible for your money. You say it's an, it, but it's like an entitlement. Yes, it is. And at least in this entitlement, you are getting paid back your money you already put in the system, rather than letting them play with it and lose it and throw it away on foolish things. So that is where I'm going to leave you tonight. Till later, be seeing you.